Good day YouTube, one MJ here and welcome back. All right, Monday, no, sorry, Tuesday. I've got the days confused. Tuesday evening here in Australia and the market is up ever so slightly again. 2.19 trillion, so just under 2.2 trillion, which is nice. Bitcoin dominance rose just a little bit, 42%. Uh, a little bit of volume there, which is nice. Uh, Bitcoin just sitting under that kind of, you know, 49,500 at the moment. It's peaked its nose over 50,000 on some exchanges, but not quite got there. And I mean, look at the gas prices go. That is people starting to, you know, start to cash in their USDC and, you know, whatever it is, their stable coins on the side, most likely, and starting to get into, well, Bitcoin uh, in a big way as well, 42% of the market, and also jumping into the altcoin. So people are getting excited. But look, this market, if it goes red tomorrow, it can change very, very quickly. People are quite fickle uh, in this space. And look, that's generally the new people. It's not the people who've been here for a while. Uh, they generally know what to do, but the new people come in and if they see Bitcoin, you know, drop only a couple of hundred dollars, they think that's it and then they panic and get out. And if they are selling at a loss, that's generally just uh, a loss that they'll accept. So hopefully, since you're here and watching this video, you're not one of those people who panics so easily and has done a little bit of research before jumping into this space. I mean, you know, if you've been watching my channel for a while, you know I'm a massive crypto fan. I have been for uh, quite some time. I got a little bit disenfranchised because I got in late in the 2017 bull run. That was amazing, but then the bear market after that just crushed me. I, you know, hadn't done a lot of research before that, and that was, you know, my learning curve. But I got back into crypto in sort of late 2019, just small bits here and there. And then definitely when we had the crash of everything in March 2020, uh, I jumped in with, you know, basically all the spare cash that I had uh, after that uh, and have been DCAing ever since. All right, anyway, moving on. That's my story <laughs> in uh, a little bit of a wrap up. But look, things are looking good. And again, the market is up, so things are generally up. 2.6% uh, overall. And so you're going to see some green. But look, there's some things that are going to be in the red there. And you can see, look, Terra Luna down the bottom there uh, lost a little bit. But what's done the best in the last 24 hours in the top 100? All right, Shiba Inu, 50%. Good Lord, what is going on there? I mean, you know, again, I'm just not getting into these meme coins. But hey, that could be the start of something crazy like Shiba Inu did earlier. We'll have to wait and see. Uh, you know, good on those people who are in Shiba Inu uh, for those gains, but yeah, I'm just not doing it. Uh, Clayton, 16%. Icon, 14%. ICP, up 11%. Flow, 10%. I mean, look, even Doge had a 10% rise. Stacks, I mean, VET, you name it. There's a number of coins that have had quite a nice gain. Right, what about losses though? In the top 100, what hasn't done as well? Well, there we can see Perp has a bit of a pullback, but these are small pullbacks. Axie Infinity, I mean, they've gone up like 130% in the last seven days, so in the last week. So probably expected a bit of a pullback. Again, DYDX has been pumping for a while. A little bit of a pullback, as we saw. Terra Luna, Synthetics, bit of a pullback. Avalanche, look, the pullbacks are small. Solana and... Going to talk about Solana very shortly, uh, but again, 1%, that's hardly anything. So the gains, not too bad. Losses, very, very minimal, which is good. But again, we've got to go to the Bitcoin chart and see where we are at. Now, as I said yesterday, this was just, the Bitcoin was just poking its head around that kind of 48,500, and we needed to see it break. And it did, and it closed above. And now we are on to the next one. Again, the market hasn't started over there. It's not even 8 o'clock in the morning stateside time yet. So we've got to wait and see. Now, what I did do, because we broke over and it was a nice clean sort of break and it wasn't just a wick and then we come straight back down. That's not to say this can't turn and come straight back down, but we are now sitting right on the bottom of this trend line. Uh, and again, it's this channel that we've been in for a really long time. So that's the channel. We've basically been in and you know inside it for most of the time, outside of it for periods, and now we are right back on that line there. So because I saw that in the chart pattern, what I did was I placed a small bet on something. And again, I don't like it to call a bet, 
but that's kind of what it is. So I placed a small bet on something that I've been wanting to for a while. Now, I haven't got it anywhere near the cheapest price that I could have. It's still quite high, but I decided, look, I've got to get in. And that's Solana. And we'll get to that very shortly. But as we can see, it had that breakout. And now it's just right on the bottom of this line. It spends a little bit of time out here, but generally we're in this channel. Sorry, not line. We've been in this channel for a long time. Again, sometimes to the upside on very rare occasions to the outside. It feels like we've been in you know, some down markets for a long time, but really uh, this is just consolidation with that upwards channel. Break out for a little bit, break out for a little bit, and now we're hoping that we're going to go back in. Now I've only got a very, very small position in Solana, and I'm really just kind of testing the waters to see where it goes. Because it's pumped so hard, I just couldn't throw tons into it, but I do have a few dollars I can put in. I've got m my money generally sitting on the side to see, again, if this rolls over. If it rolls over and then Solana gets you know absolutely smashed, not saying that is what's going to happen. I never offer financial advice for a start. It's always just my personal opinion. Then I won't have lost too much money. But if Solana does really well, I could turn a very small amount of money into a reasonable reasonable amount of money. So that's my hope. So at the moment, Bitcoin looking nice. Again, waiting to see. Wouldn't surprise me if this does roll over and come back and use this as support. But that doesn't mean it has to, but that just I'm just saying that wouldn't surprise me if that's what it does. I thought that could happen here when it broke out to come back and retest it. Didn't do it, so things are looking nice. But again, this is really going to be the key for me. If we can get above that kind of $52,500, well, $52,800, sort of let us say, we'll round it up. If we can get over that with a good clean break, I then become very, very bullish, and I am pretty much 100% certain we are... You know, again, what I would say, confirm back in a bull market, but really to be confirmed, we have to break that new all time high. But I think if we get above this, it's a very good indication. But really, this will kind of be the key here around about that kind of $58,000, $59,000 mark. We can see we've got uh, plenty of kind of sort of support slash resistance there. So I really think that around about here is going to be the key. Once we get through that, there's really no reason for us to not then bust through that kind of $64,000 level, I think. Things will probably start to move reasonably quick after that. But again, maybe not. Maybe it's just going to be a slow burn for us to get back up here. That's No one really knows. I get the feeling like things are heating up, but that's not to say that we're just going to do these kind of parabolic moves all the way. Could do. Just not sure that's going to happen. All right, moving on, Solana. Again, here's why I got into Solana. I brought this to you the other day. Here's the average price since it really started to take off. You know, it came out, dipped down. I mean, God, imagine buying it for like $1.30 right now. <laughs> Would have been an absolute great buy. Uh, but anyway, and look, I mean, it went even lower. Imagine it getting for $1.17. Let's just basically say a dollar. What an absolute move. But here it is. You run this line through the middle with the most amount of sort of touch points. Again, through here, through there, through here. And you can even move this down a little bit so it comes through here a little bit more. Just thereabouts. What this says to me, so again, if you really want to move this line, you, know, you can move it down into a roundabout there and say it's just a little bit oversold. But for me, I like to put it through there and it's roughly almost on the money. It is at its fair price at the moment. Again, this isn't anything sort of solid and guaranteed. It's just taking a bit of a look. So against the dollar, it at least appears to be at fair value. So I don't mind buying things at fair value or preferably undervalued. Again, I wish I had been buying back here and I wish I had been buying back here, but such is life. But it looks like it's about fair value. What do we know that it uh, does when things start to fire up? It generally gets quite over its fair value. So I'm hoping that I'm getting in at a good time and it's going to start doing that. But as I said before, if it doesn't and it you know starts to you know, as they say, kind of, you know, poo the bed, shit the bed is the word, uh, and it starts to go down, well, I haven't lost too much money at all. But again, it's that whole risk to reward. All right, I put some money into Solana. If it goes down, I don't lose too much. But if it goes up, maybe I make a, you know, I didn't put enough in that I'm going to become a millionaire or anything like that, but I might be able to turn, you know, a couple of hundred dollars into a few thousand dollars, you know, like maybe, you know, sort of, you know, double digit, uh, thousands of dollars who knows i'm not quite sure about that i think that might be pushing it but you never know we'll wait and see all right now it's not just that so it looks good against the dollar have a look at it against ethereum 
I showed this the other day. It was basically in this pennant. And I said, I reckon it'll break out to the upside. And it did. Now, don't get me wrong, could roll over and again poop the bed. As I said before, that's always a possibility. But hence why I haven't thrown too much into something that's pumped so hard. But I get the feeling like it's had a big pump. It's come back and consolidated and may well start to do some more big pumps. And if that happens, then awesome. Congratulations to me. And if not, again, too bad, so sad. That's the way it goes. That's part of investing, you know. Unless you're getting in at the absolute bottom of the bear market, it always becomes a little bit riskier after that. Uh, and you start to reduce the amount of gains you can make. The biggest amount, the biggest gains will come when you get into something that's still a good project, but everyone has basically given up on the entire market. Not that project so much, but even that way. But when someone's not touching a good project and they're all just done with it, and then it starts to fire up again, that's where the biggest gains from. So the dollar looks good. Ethereum, you know, I wasn't sure, but I thought, oh, if this breaks to the upside and it did, bit of a pullback, but that doesn't mean it can't fire up. Let's go to Bitcoin. Almost exactly the same. It's eerie how similar they are. Started to range and boom, broke to the upside. And I think, again, it could travel sideways for a while. If Ethereum and Bitcoin get on you know, a bit of a run and Solana doesn't, then it might go sideways, even fall down a little bit. Remembering this is not against the dollar. This is against Ethereum and Bitcoin. So it could lose a little bit. And maybe, again, we come back down to here. But eventually, I think Solana will have its next moment in the sun. If it's not already sort of starting to do it, we'll have to wait and see and start to fire up. So that's the reasons I got myself a small position in Solana. And look, if Solana kind of stays where it is for a while, then I'll continue to layer, layer in a few dollars here and there. But that's only based on Bitcoin sort of continuing to go up. If Bitcoin's not going up, then as I said, I'm only going to focus a little bit on Bitcoin, predominantly on stable coins though. But I had no position in Solana. I've regretted it for a long time. So I did put a couple of dollars into it. But again, literally only a couple of dollars. All right. Very interesting story. Bitcoin miners are making $40 million per day. $40 million. And the scary thing is, the reports out there, is they're not really selling the Bitcoin. They're holding on to it. They're waiting for higher prices. So again, depending if you believe the reports and things like that, the miners are actually taking loans out from the bank to pay their bills as opposed to selling the Bitcoin. I'm not saying no Bitcoin is being sold but very minimal amounts of Bitcoin is being sold. Pretty much everyone is holding on to Bitcoin, waiting for higher prices. Now, not quite everyone. There's still always going to be people that are kind of taking taking some profit off the table. Again, if you bought Bitcoin at, you know, you were lucky enough to get it at 4000 as if you wouldn't start to be taking some profits. It doesn't mean you're taking a lot, but you have 10 x your money. And then again, it starts to make its way up to 60, 80,000. Then you've 20 extra money. All right, maybe you're taking a little bit more. So there's always going to be somebody who's most likely taking a bit of profit because they're so far in the profit. But that doesn't mean it doesn't have a long way to go, particularly if the miners aren't selling at the moment. That's got to say something. Now, that's dependent on whether you believe that information or not. I tend to believe it from what I've seen, but I don't personally know any miners, so I can't be 100% on that. But they have seen an impressive increase of 488% since the halving. That's how much it's gone up, uh, their returns and things like that. The block rewards have increased by that. And $40 million per day. So you wonder why so much money is going into Bitcoin uh, and Bitcoin mining and anything that's Bitcoin related. But yeah, I mean, $40 million per day. Don't get me wrong, it's expensive to be a Bitcoin miner. Regularly updating uh, the miners and things like that, they generally only last for about sort of two seasons or so, and then they're updating them to the next one. But hey, at $40 million a day, and that's likely to only go up from here. Hence, again, why the miners are actually borrowing, you know, normal money, US dollars or, you know, wherever they are, Canadian dollars, whatever it may be, to pay for their uh, expenses to keep them uh, going but not really selling any bitcoin they are literally waiting for higher prices i.e probably you know a hundred two hundred thousand dollars something like that very very interesting i thought at least all right bank of america they say bitcoin is important and the crypto industry is now too large to ignore 
it was not that long ago they were very um, you know almost all banks but it's funny how quickly they changed their tune it's not actually that quickly it's taken you know many years for some of these banks but they are now saying yep this industry is too big and it can't be ignored and they're also looking heavily into things like DeFi and nfts a lot of the banks now actually know that DeFi is the future they simply cannot compete with DeFi. they need to integrate with DeFi. so again it's going to be things like yeah, well, I won't say because I don't know. There's no guarantees yet, but I'm going to say things like, you know, still maybe compound if they can get their sort of issues sorted out. That's an issue there that's worrying and that, you know, could be the downfall of compound. I'm not saying it will be. Most of the time they can get these things fixed. It's just a few extra rewards that they can sort out. But, you know, maybe Aave, I really like Aave. They've been around for a long time. They actually have, I think it's a European uh, financial license, the actual uh project itself you know and the the dow behind it and things like that so that's great i believe they were looking at doing the same over in asia getting an asian financial license and you know then they'll get more and more financial licenses and it'll most likely be that if this is the way it plays out there's no guarantees that all these banks start to jump on the back of that because they just they can't offer four percent at the moment and i mean Aave and other places can offer a whole lot more but they're the, what is it the Aave Professional I think is Aave Pro something like that you have to be full KYC to get on it and that's what the banks are going to use and that's going to be a guaranteed 4% now you know we'll have to wait and see if the you know the 4% guaranteed can last through bear markets but yeah I mean things are very very exciting and again even these you know long time sort of you know anti crypto big associations even they're jumping on board but not all we'll get to another story shortly where we can see that there's still fud out there and you know people trying to scare people out of the market right new zealand has launched its first bitcoin only investment fund so this is you know i would say overall it's good for people in new zealand particularly those who you know they just can't understand how to send bitcoin and you know wallets and you know seed phrases and all that kind of thing this is a perfect way for them to get some exposure to Bitcoin. They won't actually own Bitcoin. It's kind of like owning Bitcoin futures and things like that. But it still means Bitcoin has to be bought when they're buying up that stuff. So we go down here. They would have the opportunity to add the asset class to their portfolio without having to own it directly. We see this as a great way for people to get that exposure without having to do all the more complicated and technical parts of it themselves. I think this is for, you know, as they say you know the boomers and the oldies and things like that because they're seeing the gains in cryptocurrencies and hearing about it but it really does it'd be just too much for a lot of them they're like computers i can barely use one and now you want me to you know again get ledgers and you know maybe lose it all sending it here and there so they're just not going to do that these kind of things i think will bring you know and they have most of the money the boomers that's where most of the money is at the moment in the world now tied up with the boomers outside of you know institutions and things like that but regular people the boomers have got the money and this helps them get into it makes it so much easier and i do think it will be the way going forward for the older generation i think the new generation are going to not really worry about that they're all going to self custody you know there'll be new things come out you know whether it's part of the strike app or you know squares cash app or who knows but again they'll all self custody on their phones and things like that they won't be having other people doing the work for them those days are slowly but surely going but that's why the banks are going to have to get onto DeFi because they'll just get left behind sooner rather than later i think banks days are numbered and i think you're going to see things like you know maybe Aave or compound or something along those lines you know computer programs that just do it for everybody uh, and they have a fair system no one generally gets a better gig than others they may have some you know small uh extras for people who own a little bit more but i don't think they'll ever go too far out of that because then someone will come out and have one that is just you know basically the same for everyone and that's the one that everyone will flock to you know the institutions might want to stay in the ones that pay more but when all the little guys get out and go to the other one that pays them the same amount as what the institutions get they get left behind and i believe that is the future that we're moving to but I don't think that's happening this year. I don't think it's happening in the next five years. I don't even think that really happens in the next 10 years. But I think next 20, 30, 40, 50 years, I think that's where it is. I think banks are gone and things, again, something similar, if not maybe Aave or Compound or MakerDAO or something like that, is where it's at and everyone gets the same kind of deal. All right, 
XRP. So the judge rejects XRP holders' bid to join the SEC case uh, against Ripple. Uh, not against the SEC case is against Ripple. Uh, the hodlers don't want to go against Ripple. They actually want to be uh, part of the court case. So the judge has come out and he said the determination comes after a number of X after a number of XRP token holders aim to file friends of the court briefs, which would allow them to join the case as defendants and support Ripple in its claims that the token does not violate security laws so the xrp army good on them getting out there and you know trying to do their part and so love hate xrp ripple you know whatever you think about it and i support everyone's right to love it or hate it you know it's it's a personal choice i think if you're in the crypto space we do all need to get behind ripple uh, and support this case i'm not saying support ripple i'm not saying support xrp that's a personal choice but we need to get behind them in this case because you know, it, it's still possible, although it's seeming less and less likely, but it's still possible that they lose this case. And if they do, it'd send shockwaves through the entire crypto industry. So don't just, you know, there's a lot of talk about there. This is going to be settled any minute now. And, you know, all these great things are going to happen. And, and I'm hopeful of that. And I'm leaning towards, I think that's going to happen as well. But gee, I wouldn't bet you know, my entire life savings on it, as they would say. Uh, Ripple loses, you know, Bitcoin will be fine, Ethereum will be fine, though. Don't get me wrong, they'll get absolutely hammered in price as everything goes down, but every other cryptocurrency outside of Ethereum and Bitcoin would then be in the firing line, and yeah, it'd be truly horrendous for the crypto industry. Wouldn't mean it's over and ended, but gee, people who are too heavy into certain alts would get absolutely flogged, and those who didn't have enough you know, Ethereum and Bitcoin would, yeah, they'd be hurting. Don't think that's what's going to happen. Definitely not trying to FUD. But again, I've always got my what I think is going to happen and then my plan. So my plan for what I think is going to happen and then my plan for, well, what happens if that doesn't happen? What happens if it goes the other way? Then what do I do? Hence why, again, I haven't real, completely ruled out the possibility that Ripple still lose this, this case and that is the cause of the next, you know, really horrendous bear market where, who knows, maybe Bitcoin goes back down to the three, $4,000 levels again. Again, uh, sorry, again, again, I'm saying, but I don't think that would be the end of it. I just think that would be something that would really hurt the industry for many, many years to come. And, you know, again, fortune would favor the brave who would ever, you know, maybe have money on the side and have taken profits at a good time or just continue to buy into the market till eventually it goes back up because they will never stop printing fiat. And that is the truth. They just can't. For periods, and it'll be very short periods, sure, they will. They might be able to stretch it out for a few years where they don't print any more money. But eventually, they just have to. That is the way the fiat system works. That is why there is no ceiling to how much some of these cryptocurrencies, particularly Bitcoin, can be worth because fiat has no, uh, yeah, no end no end game. All right, moving on. Credit Suisse creates Ethereum-based shares in Swiss sports resort. So you can buy shares in a resort now on the Ethereum blockchain. This is amazing. And again, these are the things that are going to happen that are really going to transform this place. It's one small little win in a certain market, but that will then permeate into other markets. Other countries are going to go, well, if they did that, why don't we do something similar? And then another country will go, oh, gee, look, two countries have now done that. And before you know it, it spreads like wildfire, you know, trickle, trickle, flood, same thing. So Credit Suisse, I think is how you say it, is taking part in the tokenization of a Swiss resort using the Ethereum blockchain. So very important, they're tokenizing things and they're using the Ethereum blockchain, not Solana, not Cardano, not Tezos, not Terra, you know they're going to Ethereum. And that's not trying to, you know, throw shade on any of the other, you know, layer one platforms, because I actually think they're all going to be layer two platforms. I think everything, because they're all EVM uh, compatible, will go back to Ethereum. They are the sharding, all these other layers. They will eventually go back onto the Ethereum uh, network. That's my personal opinion, again, not financial advice, but that's why they all want to be EVM compatible, because Ethereum is the mother chain of those kind of Web3 things. Bitcoin will be the uh, where the wealth comes from. That is, you know, again, that'll be the foundation of the worth, but the Ethereum blockchain itself will be, you know, how everything gets spread around. Now that could change. Maybe Bitcoin suddenly becomes, you know, you know, there's been, there's projects being put on Ethereum, uh, 
Bitcoin, sorry, right now that are allowing smart contracts? Is it possible that they then, you know, completely get rid of Ethereum and all these other, you know, solutions? Maybe, but unlikely. So I think Ethereum uh, will be the home base, and I think uh, Bitcoin will be the base currency of everything on, again, you know, blockchain and Web3 and things like that. But that's just my personal opinion. Now, moving on. The law in Switzerland, and I'll say that again, the law in Switzerland has updated in February 2021, so not that long ago, so that tokenized securities, because they're still considering that they could be a security, are, well, you know, buying shares on uh, in something, that is a security. So tokenized securities are allowed to be traded on a blockchain with the same legal standing as traditional assets. This is huge. This is absolutely massive. This isn't cryptocurrencies being treated exactly the same, but it's the blockchain. That's where it's going to start. People are going to get on the blockchain. Then they'll start to use cryptocurrencies and things like that. And as people have said, we get to the stage where everything is tokenized. Now, the blockchain is recognized in the law as a valid ledger whereby you can register shares. I think this is huge. I think this is a pivotal moment. It's only going to be a small part of, you know, the broader scope of things. But again, you know, the Swiss have come out and they've set a precedence. Will other countries follow? And I can guarantee you it's only going to take one or two other countries to do it. And they can be small nations. They don't have to be big. Switzerland is a reasonable sized nation, which is why I'm so excited. Again, if it was just some tiny little you know, country that no one really knows about, not so much. But Switzerland is big. You get a couple of other countries follow and then all of a sudden every other country in the world is just going to start to follow suit. And that's when you start to get that flood as opposed to just the trickle, trickle. Right, moving on. So SEC has subpoenaed USDC stablecoin back a circle. Now Circle has come out and said they're fully cooperating with the investigation and I actually love that. I don't love that they're being subpoenaed but I you know, I knew this was going to come all along. Stable coins, I really believe, are the biggest issue that governments and regulators are worried about. They're not so much worried about crypto. It's the stable coins because they need to make sure it's fully transparent and stable coins need to operate within the old traditional fin financial system rules. They really do. Crypto does not. Crypto is completely separate. Stable coins are just a digital version of cash. That needs to be regulated the old way. I completely agree. No problems with that. You know, maybe banks should only have stable coins. You know, th that's another argument. But it needs to be regulated the way it's always been regulated. You can't say stable coins uh, need to be regulated differently when they're just a digital form of cash. No. Nah. Old traditional finance, they own that. But crypto itself needs its own regulation. Stable coins, different story. And we need, you know, anyone who's issuing a stable coin, they need to be fully transparent and they need to do all the right things because that is what the SEC and that are looking for. They're looking for proof that there's all this dodgy stuff going on. You know, there's, oh, you know, they, it wasn't backed by cash, it was backed by, you know, just garbage and, you know, stuff that wasn't really there. If they can find, you know, none of it would be good. That's not going to be the case. There's always going to be some elements of things they're not going to be happy with that. But if we can have it so, you know, as squeaky clean as we possibly can, then they're going to have a hard time coming out and, you know, really over-regulating it and saying that is why we had to regulate it so heavy because there was so much dodgy stuff going on out there. So all these stable coins, if they do the right thing, have it back properly, make themselves completely transparent, and I'm, again, I'm not talking about their cryptos, just their stable coins, abide by the old rules, then it makes it really, really hard for the SEC or the CFTC or FinCEN or anyone to come down hard on crypto because all of a sudden, there's not really any... Sh again, there's always going to be some shady stuff, and we're going to get into that in the next one, which people like to fear monger on. But if there's next to none of it, then they're not going to be able to come hard, come down hard on crypto. But stable coins is what has them worried the most. Because, you know, again, that's still going to be the world reserve currency, whether it's USDC or not, but something pegged to the US dollar. Hence why that really does need to be squeaky clean. But here's what we're up against. JP Morgan, I mean, they're chopping and changing every day. The other day... I mean, he was coming out and saying it could 10x. He said he still wasn't getting into it, old Jamie Diamond, but here he is. JP Morgan CEO, Bitcoin has no intrinsic value and regulators will regulate the hell out of it. I go back to here. 
if the stable coin thing turns out to be a massive sham and can't be trusted and all the rest of it, you're absolutely right because that's their thing. A stable coin is just a digital version of their thing, i.e. cash. If we can have it squeaky clean, then no, they won't come and regulate the hell out of it. They just won't be able to because it will be right there. Now, here's what gets more interesting. He comes out and says, if people are using it for tax avoidance and sex trafficking and ransomware, it's going to be regulated, whether you like it or not. They've used cash for the same stuff. People have used cash to avoid paying tax. Sex trafficking was all cash, you know, once upon a time. Well, I suppose I can't say that. People might have used gold and who knows, whatever. But this is all stuff that they were doing with cash. That it's actually harder to do it with cryptocurrency. So this is that fear mongering where, he, again, he comes out and says, you know, people are using crypto mainly for this. No, crypto people are using crypto mainly because it's a better system. Are there some, a very small, minute uh, bunch of the community that are, you know, using it for nefarious purposes? Absolutely, but nowhere near as much as what uh, they have used cash. Crypto hasn't been around long enough uh, for people to do that. And now they're seeing that it's actually quite hard because there is a public ledger there that openly shows what has happened to that cash. Now, again, we've, there's a few little bits and pieces there that can make it really hard for them to follow it. But generally, they can follow it in the end. It's just trying to identify that last address and who's getting the funds from it. That's the hard part. But seeing where it's going... Most of the time, they can see where it's going quite easily. It's just then trying to identify who the owner of that last wallet is, again, that's cashing it out. That's the hard part, but that won't last forever. Eventually, that will be sorted, and then all of this FUD, and that's what it is, it is legitimate FUD, will be gone. And again, I reckon Jamie Dimon is just doing this to keep the price down because they're buying the crap out. We already know they are, whether they're buying Bitcoin or not, they're bringing out all sorts of crypto services, Bitcoin this and Ethereum that, you name it. They are 100% on board. They just left it too long and so they will FUD the absolute crap out of it until they feel they've got the best position they can before they then start to come out with you know this space has really cleaned itself up in the last couple of months to year or so just wait for it that's what it's going to be this place is clean and now i think it's really mature and ready for mainstream adoption that is literally what is going on here i'm 100 percent certain of that there's yeah it's so funny the stuff that comes out of particularly people who just really tried to beat it and hammer it down for so long and they are now accepting that they've lost they're not giving up without a fight but they can see the future and their days are numbered and it scares them and so they will keep coming out with this kind of garbage that, again, it's not to say that none of this stuff is happening with crypto. Or all sorts of nefarious stuff can be done with crypto, but it's a whole lot easier to do it with cash than it is with crypto. All right, look, that's it from me, so I'll let you go. I am excited, uh, you know, hopefully we breach over that 50 sort of two-ish thousand dollar mark and, you know, then I really start to get excited. But again, I'm not going to be more excited until we are actually over that $64,000 mark with Bitcoin. When Bitcoin does that, I think there it would be very hard to say that, no, this was a bear market. <laughs> I think that would really get people super excited because it's one of those things. It's the way it is. People don't want to touch something until it's really starting to pump. You know what I mean? If it's looking a bit sketchy, oh, no, I don't want to touch that. I wouldn't invest in that. It's basically when it's at a new all-time high and starting to go higher, then they think this is a great time to get in. Sometimes you can be right. It's called a breakout trade and people do that and it does work. But a lot of the time it gets more people wrecked than anything else. All right, stay safe. Be kind to one another. Everybody should be on that game train at the moment and I'll see you next time.